folks and welcome to another video in my carving X series. Um, today I'm from a different location here and actually the, the sun is going down quite quickly. Um, I want to give you a brief overview over a very very special axe. Um, in the beginning of this year I went to the Outdoor Adventure Show down in Toronto and I met a um, young talented blacksmith by the name of Paul Kruskowski who is the Toronto blacksmith um, and we got in touch and we, we just um, talked a lot about axes and about um, geometries, about proportions and sizes and eventually I went down there to his shop and we spent an amazing afternoon together talking about all of these different um, factors on a carving axe um, and we forged this axe together. Um, now this axe I have here is um, a very compact but yet medium heavy axe um, that was inspired by axes I saw up in Denmark, in Roskilde, in the Viking ship um, building wharf, um, I had the uh, amazing chance, and sorry about the noise, there's a little road going by. Um, I had the amazing chance to go to that wharf um, after a, um, a little bit of time up in Sweden. And um, there was a whole wall with different axes that are. Um, there was a whole wall of different axes that were built, um, used, um, or that they are used in that war for shipbuilding and for hewing and making boards and everything. And um, they were quite interesting models, um, and a lot of different hewing axes, and a, a lot of small hand axes as well that um, fall exactly into the category that I am using mostly for spoon carving, bowl carving, cooks carving, and pallet carving. Um, and that's the things I'm doing at the moment. Um, and doing all of these different utility items um, and, 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 and products, you can imagine that you can pretty much build a lot of different things with those axes. So yeah, this, this axe um, inspired this model here. Um, what was very important for me in making this axe was um, a quite long cutting blade, um, but not overly long, because um, it might just get in the way with a lot of, um, a lot of um, carving procedures and um, very important as well for me is that um, the carving or the cutting edge is um, able to slice um, so it has to have a certain length at the same time when the cutting edge is becoming too long in my opinion it kind of spreads out the weight of the axe a little bit too much over the whole cutting edge and you're not getting this kind of crisp feeling um, in, in stock removal um, which is just my personal opinion here um, very important for me was as well um, a certain profile from the top. Now this axe turned a little bit, turned out a little bit thicker than I, than I wanted it. But I, I would just say that that's um, an experience, um, and like I know a little bit better now what I prefer in a carving axe. Um, yeah. So overall, I wanted to give it a very very typical Viking um, theme. Um, being kind of like interesting to be here in Eastern Canada, um, where there were to a certain degree towards the coast um, Viking settlements and at the same time crafting and carving here it, it's an interesting feel however um, I was able to do a little bit of decoration on this axe as well and then just um, make a car uh, an axe handle for it from from a piece of offcut that I that I used for paddles and um, it came, became a very very beloved axe of mine that I'm using for a lot of spoons um, a lot of um, big stock removal in, in, in paddle carving and um, for my cookses and um, if I would just have the choice of, of one axe and a certain weight and a, a certain size um, it would be probably something along the lines of, of this axe here um, I'm I'm currently trying to, to figure out um, with having this amazing comparison between so many different axes um, what I personally prefer and what for me personally um, in this category of a carving and crafting hand axe is, is most important for me and there's a lot of different takes um, they might look very similar in the, in the first moment but when, when you work with them and you realize there's different profiles um, different thicknesses and different distribution of weight um, there's quite a big difference in, in all these axes so um, this was basically my take on it that um, I would personally choose or change maybe a little bit here and there about it but um, it was definitely a wonderful experience to be able to forge my own axe that um, I'm going to be able to use now. And um, I, I thank Paul Kruskowski from Toronto Blacksmith a lot for this. And um, I just want to take you 
through a little bit of, of um, carving a spoon blank um, a couple of, of, of moments and then I want to switch to some footage that I was um, recording down um, with, with, um, with Paul down in Toronto. That's where I love this axe as well. It has a nice and long curved cutting edge, but it's also very compact. Paul and I, we forged um, this axe from 4140 steel, and um, we heat treated and tempered it twice. That gave it a really amazingly fine grain and um, this axe just takes a very very sweet edge and holds it for a very long time Yeah folks, um, I hope that you had a good time watching and that you liked the footage that um, I recorded down with Paul in Toronto. Um, so Paul um, was started to bring out a lot of different carving axes. Um, most of them along the lines of um, a mix between some Scandinavian Viking and um, Eastern European style which is um, his own heritage. And I find his approach very very nice and very interesting. Um, he's definitely delivering a beautiful axe that is um, after we talked very much based on the limited knowledge that I have about carving um, after all using an axe every single day nearly for carving and um, I'm really happy um, with what he came up and and um, I can absolutely recommend checking out his work and um, as far as North America and and especially Canada, I think it's it's amazing to have a young guy who is um, forging axes um, based on historical review and actual review with the people using them and um, yeah, just making it his um, livelihood and um, going forward with that strong. So um, support him if you want to get a, a carving axe made, um, go ahead, Toronto Blacksmith, I'm going to put the link in the description. And I had an absolute blast forging this with him and I want to point out that he gives day courses where you can forge your own dream axe um, which is amazing um, and then and for a lot of people out there I know this would be absolute a bucket list dream come true kind of situation so um, go ahead look him up um, if you like those these videos I'm making I just got a new camera a new old camera which hopefully is gonna step up the, the, the picture the image quality and everything a little bit as well um, and if you like the videos I'm putting a lot of time into these and edit them and everything and I want to keep them coming but it would be awesome if you guys would just like give me a little bit feedback down in the comment section um, drop a like and a subscription and um, if you know anybody who's into axes 
um, just feel free to share this video and just help the channel grow a little bit. Um, I'm having already amazing conversations with people down in the comments section and I'm really happy that everybody is keeping it very respectful and supportive and um, thank you very much for that. So with this little review or overview over this beloved axe I was able to forge with Paul. Um, I wish you a great day and I'm going to see you next time. Cheers.